Hello everyone, welcome back to Georgia Paper Crafts. Today we're doing a quick uh, set of 10 cards from the November 2019 card kit from Simon Says Stamp. It's called Woodland Whimsy. And before I begin uh, making the cards, I wanted to show you exactly what comes in the kit. Um, so start with the inspiration sheet in the list of contents, which you get with every um, card kit. Then we get four pieces of cardstock. We've got the Nina Desert, Desert Storm. We've got the Ivory, uh, Green, Green Leaf, and Fog colored cardstock. These are all made by Simon Says Stamp. Then we've got this uh, six by six paper pad from Moda Scrap. Um, this is called Forever Green. There are 12 sheets and they are single sided. We get one sheet with some cut aparts that we can use, so it has some sentiments on there. And then we've got uh, 11 other sheets, um, kind of in a green, uh, brown tone, kind of woodsy, floral, uh, kind of fall theme. And then we get 12 of the uh, unique Simon Says Stamp exclusive Susie Plantamira watercolor cards, Winter, Winter Thanks. And these are 12 different designs. These are all printed on uh, Tim Holtz watercolor paper on the smooth side. You can see that's the, the rougher side. And you get 12 designs of these. Um, you can use any kind of medium to color these in. You can cut them apart. You can do whatever you need to to make a card. So I anticipate I'll use a couple of these to make some cards. Very cute designs. That's a cute little bear. Get 12 of those. Then we get this uh, Simon Says Stamp. This is a Ho Ho Deer Circle Wafer Thin Die. Um, I believe they released this with their recent uh, release. And they give you some red pom poms in case you want to make a nose for the reindeer. Then you get a set of watercolors. Um, these watercolors are, I'm not sure who made, let me see who makes these. Uh, one set of 21 bright watercolors, it doesn't say, um, but um, I don't know what kind of quality they are, but we'll definitely try them out and, and see how, what, how good they work. Um, do get two little fine tip sponge. I guess this is to use to get into very fine areas. Also get um, one sheet of the Gina K Designs Masking Magic Paper. And then we get the 6x8 uh, stamp set called Woodland Whimsy. This has um, pictures of some critters, a deer, bear, uh, I'm not sure what that's supposed to be, but he's cute, um, and just some basic sentiments. It says you're one of a kind, hello, so incredibly thankful for you. Um, love you, and then this banner that you can put different sentiments in it says welcome baby, thankful or excuse me, thinking of you, birthday wishes, and sending you love. So, all right, looking forward to uh, working on this. Um, let's go ahead and get started. So my first card, I wanted to make a scene card. So I'm kind of laying out some of my stamps here, trying to get an idea of how I want my scene to go. And first I decided to go ahead and stamp the deer because I want him to be in the forefront. And so I go ahead and stamp him on some white uh, paper. And then I stamped out uh, another deer image onto some masking paper. And you can see here that I went ahead and cut that out, fussy cut it out. And I put that down. Then I also cut a hillside uh, 
uh, almost like a snow border out of the masking tape and I put that down. Now I'm going to stamp some of these birch trees and I'm going to do some more masking. But here, and I know that went by really fast, I apologize there, but um, I was showing you that I ran out of the masking uh, sheet that came in the kit, which was the Gina K masking sheet, which was good, but I needed more for these long pieces. So I pulled out my Avery um, labels and uh, I'll list that down below that you can get that make really good masking. Um, I got this idea from Jennifer McGuire and this product is very cheap on Amazon and it lasts a long time. So it's good for masking. So I went ahead and cut all of these out and um, cut all the trees out. I stamped them, cut all the trees out of the masking paper, then masked it. So as you can see, my pretty much my whole scene right here is masked. I'm going to go ahead and stamp some leaves. I'm trying to decide. Initially, I thought I would uh, stamp these right there, but then I just thought they were just too big. So I'm going to actually put those back, and I'll pull out some of the smaller leaves. I thought that fit a little bit better. So I'm going to go ahead and just stamp these with my... regular stamping block and this is just some Copic friendly ink because I do know I'll want to color color these later on and I also pulled out in some masking paper and I cut those out to mask those so everything's masked right now now I'm going to bring in my distress oxide uh, inks and I'm going to blend this scene. So first here I am using Stormy Sky just to put down some darker blue color and I'm leaving a little bit of highlight in the middle. And here this um, is a Salty Ocean and that's a little bit brighter blue. It came out a little bit lot brighter than I thought uh, initially thought I wanted. But going back over it with the uh, Stormy Sky helped to soften that up a little bit. Then I came in with some Evergreen Bow down in the bottom just to, to give it a little bit of a greenish blue color. And by the way, my blending brushes are just some generic uh, blending brushes that I bought on Amazon. And I will put a link down below. I think they work really well. And here I'm taking off, off my mask. This is the fun part when you can see how well it looks. Everything masked and you can see the scene come to life. But as usual, sometimes I don't cut my mask close enough. And so what happens is you get that little white halo um, from the mask that doesn't blend with the, blink, the ink blending. Um, so you can't tell real well on this, on, you know, just from looking at it right now but it's definitely there but you know in general I was okay with it I did go over it a little bit with the with the stormy sky now I'm bringing in some of my zig clean clean color real brush markers and I have a difficult time saying that and I so apologize I will put the colors that I am using on the screen and um, I'm just blending them out darkest to lightest and I'm using that also for all of the trees by the way this is Bristol smooth cardstock I forgot to say that at the beginning I am using Bristol smooth anytime I want to use ink blending or any kind of zig real Clean, or clean color real brush markers I use Z, or the Bristol Smooth cardstock as I feel it blends better. And I'm just coloring in the leaves. Using just a combination of green, red, uh, orange. Though I don't, I'm not sure that these would be this bright. I probably should have made it more of a lighter color, but 
So it is. And then I'm going to bring in um, my black marker because I just felt like it needed a little bit more depth. And I started going around the leaves there. And um, then I realized I needed to outline the rest of the images. So I went back and just pretty much traced all the images with my black graphic marker. Or it's actually a pen, not a marker. And just kind of making it pop out a little bit more. And then I decided to go over the deer also. So I'm just doing all of that. I could have re-stamped this if I hadn't done masking and stamping and everything. And it was just a one picture that had, you know, been stamped. I could have left it in my Misty and, and just re-stamped it with some black ink. But unfortunately, because I masked everything, this I wasn't able to do that. So... All right, so then I pulled a sentiment out and I stamped that on the front using the Distress Outside Stormy Sky ink. I used some glue, put that down on the uh, card base. Again, all my card bases are white, A2 size card bases that I make out of cardstock from my stash. I use my Quickie Glue Pen to put some glue along the edges. And now I'm using some of the Lawn Fawn, Fawn Prisma Glitter there just to add a little bit of shimmer and shine like there's some snow on the ground. Using my white pen to put a couple additional embellishments there. And that's it for this card. Okay, so two and three go together. What I did here is I did one of my favorite uh, techniques. I like to use uh, pieces of the pattern paper to make a, a central, essentially a collage. So in the, the front of the paper pad had pieces of, uh, had a collage of all the pattern papers that was in the kit. I cut that down, but what I realized is they were too short. So I needed to cut some more, um, pattern paper. So I went through all the pattern paper, cut a, maybe a, a quarter of an inch off of each, and I'm just laying them all down in, in a pattern on this off-white piece of paper, which I believe measures two and a half by probably five and a half, and just putting it, uh, laying it out in a pattern that I like. Once I'm finished putting all this together, I'll cut off the edges and I'll have my nice piece of paper now because I had so much left over I did make an additional piece and that is done off camera so I'm showing you here I did two of them and in the other one I used some of my glitter tape that I have just from my stash and here I'm taking two of the cutout pieces one says season greetings and one says, kiss me under the mistletoe. And I am just matting that on some of the uh, apple green cardstock that came in the kit. I'm going to pull out some, um, some more of that apple green cardstock, put the pieces, the uh, collage piece on each of those. off the excess go ahead and adhere that to the card base and then I'm just kind of trying to decide where I want to place these cut apart I'm going to go ahead and use some foam adhesive to pop these up. And I decide to use one of these red pom-poms on the reindeer's nose here. 
Now this pom-pom is just really big, I think, so I've cut it in half. To see if I can make it not so big and poofy. It worked a little bit better. However, a lot of fibers seem to go everywhere. But I still got it to work. I'm going to bring in some green rhinestones for my stash. Just place them around the card just to add some additional embellishment. And then the next card, I'm going to bring in some, these are almost like clear crystal um, sequins, and I'm putting them on the mistletoe. You can't see it very well here, but you'll be able to see it in the close-up. It gives it a little bit of extra shine. Add all of those down. Plus, I'm going to bring in a little heart here, a red heart. And here's the finished cards. Next up, I wanted to try and, and use this wreath builder. This is the Gina K wreath builder. This is my new favorite little thing. It's been out for a long time, but it's new to me. So I'm taking some of the leaves and some of the other images from the stamp set and just stamping them out in the formation um, using the wreath builder. And pretty much what it is is you put it down and then you pretty much stamp it, move the paper, stamp it, move the paper, stamp it, and it, it forms a perfect wreath. However, I am still getting used to this and trying to figure it out and figure out the what looks the best. Um, sometimes I'm not achieving that. Um, I wasn't real happy with how this first one turned out. It wasn't bad, but I, I don't know. The second one that I'm going to do here turned out a little bit better. And again, I'm not going to make you sit through me doing all of this. It's pretty much just stamping and stamping. As you can see, I just did a bunch of repeat stamping there. And once I'm finished, what I'm going to do is I'm going to color each of those in. Here I was thinking maybe I'd add a heart there, but I decided to just leave it as be. So you can hear I'm, uh, so here you can see I'm coloring it in with some green markers, green Copic markers. I'm just going to color a couple of them in and then do the rest off camera. I'm going to bring in some red for the berries. Pretty simple coloring there. So I was finished with that one. Moving on to this other one, the one I, I told you the very first one I wasn't real happy with. And as you can see, I, I also um, stamped your one of a kind in the middle there. Well, I also stamped it crooked. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell that, but yeah, it's crooked. So I was determined not to give up on this. I mean, it took me a little while to do this. So I was, I just, I said, okay, I'm gonna color this. And then I'm going to uh, cut out a circle. So I cut out a scallop circle here and I decided I would re-stamp the uh, sentiment um, and then heat emboss it. So I'm doing that. You're one of a kind. I'm heating, heat embossing with white embossing powder. And this looks good. Turned out pretty well. I was happy with it. Although I did have to stamp it twice, I believe. I think the first one it didn't turn out real dark. So then I, I actually chanced it and redid it. Um, usually I don't do that if I can't get it in the right place, but I, I went ahead and did it with this one. Let me see, I re, because it is pretty simple to reline it up. And here I decided I'd go ahead and just stamp hello in the center of this one. And I'm using the Simon Says Stamp 
green ink. I'm going to take some of the pattern paper and I cut out two uh, scallop border edge dies. These are from Avery L from some green paper. I believe this green paper is from my stash. I'm not even sure what the color. It's a dark green. Put those together and place that on the card base. Initially, I wasn't sure if I was going to do this in a landscape or portrait style, but then decided I would put it in, a, in the landscape. And I'm just using this green circle because I was kind of going to offset it. Well, what happened was when I put down the stamped circle, that turned out to be a little bit further away from the green stamped circle not the green stamp, but the green circle. And I felt it, it left a little, I don't know, it didn't, didn't sit real well with me, but I had already put it down, so I left it. So moving on to the second one, um, I cut out the, the middle piece, and I decided I'm going to pop that up to try to give it a little dimension. Here I'm just laying out my background. Again, a piece of uh, pattern paper uh, matted with some black chocolate cardstock using some of the wood grain paper uh, for a middle piece. I matted uh, the wreath piece onto a piece of chocolate cardstock and I put the circle piece that I had cut out on some fun foam and I was going to pop that out. Well, I didn't pay attention to the direction of my flowers when I put that down and that was upside down. So I pulled it up, I'm going to put it down, and then I'm going to look to get that back in place. Well, once I do that, the sentiment is it once again <laughs> crooked. So I pull it up, ruin it, of course, get that on straight, and then I restamp another sentiment. Yeah, this, this card gave me some fits, but I do think it turned out okay. Went ahead and reapplied some glue, put that down, and I actually like how this one turned out. I, I think that looks okay. Now here on the green one, that's the one I was talking about. The green circle just is too much green. It, it's just like a blank space. I think it needed a little bit more, but I didn't add anything else. I wasn't sure what to add. So I just left it, but I do like the way that the wreath turned out, and I like that I that I cut it into a circle. I think that looks pretty, pretty nice too. Here I'm just adding some red stickles to the berries, just to add a little bit of dimension. I'm also going to bring in some of the diamond stickles and add those just to the sides just to help have a little bit more interest. And you see here I'm that green circle is still bothering me. I was trying to figure out something to put there, but nothing really worked, so I just let it be. Here I'm just adding some more of the red stickles. In some more of the diamond stickles. And that's it. So here are the finished cards. Now the next three cards I'm doing, I'm using three of the pre-printed um, cards that came in the kit. These, these um, pre-printed printed scenes from Susie Plantamira, I think I'm saying that wrong. So I'm starting out here with this one um, that says, thank you so much. And I decided I'd try out these watercolors. Well, they worked okay, but I will tell you this, they're very, they leave a very chalky um, feel to it. Um, I didn't like the way it felt once it was finished. Once I, you know, rubbed my hand over, it didn't sm feel smooth, but they to me they went okay went on fine and they worked just fine as you can see. Um, I just put some water directly onto the pan into the colors themselves and just kind of 
pulled the color out. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't have much else to say about them except for, I mean, they work fine. I don't anticipate it would be something I would pull out and use frequently, but I think they were good for, for basic watercoloring for sure. And again, I, I will have to go over it again, this first uh, first round of coloring doesn't, it's not very dark. So I'll have to go over it again just to darken everything up. And again, these are pre-printed onto uh, Tim Holtz watercolor paper. And um, they could take a lot more water. I could have put the water directly onto the paper, um, but I just chose just to go kind of the way I'm doing it right now. So as you can see, I'm just continuing on coloring and um, adding color, going back and forth, um, trying to darken up a little bit here with like a little bit deeper color using a little bit less water. And this has been sped up, obviously, um, just to help get through it, as I know this is a pretty long video. I am coloring on my uh, Wolf and flower silicone mat here. This is made uh, to wipe up very easily and is good for, you know, if you want to ink blend onto it or paint on it or anything, it's easy to clean up. You can actually, those wells over onto the right side, you could actually put color in those and mix them up and, and paint from there. Um, I'm, you know, this is good and, uh, you know, it, using my Tim Holtz. Uh, Glass mat is also good. That's easy to clean up. However, that does do a lot of um, glare when I'm videotaping. That's why I'm using this. It's just good um, for cleanup. So here, I didn't like that they the colors. It just kind of um, you know it. it Weaken the outlines. So what I did was I just went over everything with my black marker again. So sorry, I just went through that real quick. But you'll see it in the finished picture in the finished picture in the end. Now here I decided to use a different medium for my second one. I'm using the card with the little girl um, and it's standing in the snow, and the card says thank you. This time I'm using my Zig Clean Color Real Brush markers and I am using them with water. So I'm laying down some color and pulling it out with some water. And I really like the way that this turned out. I thought it uh, turned out really uh, striking, honestly. Um, I really like the blue color. And I'll have all the colors listed below that you can see. This is actually very easy to do. Just putting down a little, you know, color swatch, swatch there and then just pulling it out with just a touch of, paper, uh, of water and again I have some clean water off the side you can see in a, in a cup there and I'm just pull in, putting dipping my paintbrush in there and this is a number six paintbrush and I'm just dipping that in and getting fresh water wiping them off to, on the side on a paper towel to get it clean and just moving right along. When I want a dark, darker color, I'll just add a little bit more. If I think I've pulled out too much, I'll make it a little bit darker by adding a little bit more color. Put some pink on her cheeks. I'm doing her hat there. I'm going to color her gloves and her scarf red. Get to that as soon as I guess I get this done. And 
and I try to work in areas that are not still wet um, so that the colors don't bleed into each other. Sometimes that's not always easy to do, but um, here I was pretty lucky and, and it dried fairly quickly. So by the time I was ready to move on to a different color, I could do that. Now here initially I wanted to put some blue color on the, on the snowflakes. Well, then I blended it out and it just got to be a hot mess. So I was like, okay, let me just take this opportunity to pull this all out and, and just give her a blue background. So what you see here is me just putting the blue color around and pulling it all out and just kind of doing some shading around her, giving her this blue uh, background color. Now you, this is definitely where you need to be cautious. Um, putting it right up to the line so that it doesn't bleed within each other. And it, there were a couple places within the red that I mixed it on accident. Um, sometimes you can, you can correct that by just uh, putting more water on it and blending it out. But as you can see here, I'm just going around her and essentially putting, pulling, putting the color down and pulling it out. And I continue to do that throughout the the whole picture here. I continue coloring around just until I get it all done. And initially I thought I would color in the, the letters, but I decided I would just go ahead and do a blank wash of blue over that. All right, so I'll come back and show you how I finished that. But moving on to this one, I colored the bear um, and I'm going to cut him out. I colored him. Uh, with a black and red striped scarf and a red hat um, for my favorite major league soccer team, the Lamb United. So um, I actually wrote on his cap that says the Lamb United. So that was in support of my favorite soccer team. And I'll show how, how I finish that off here shortly. I'll do him first, actually. So I put down two pieces of pattern paper. I'm going to pop him up onto the pattern paper here, but I'm going to put the, the sentiment love you down below because I love the Lamb United. And last year we were MLS uh, Cup champions. So when you are cup champions, you get a star. So I am putting a star over the heart and also on the hat to signify that we were cup champions last year. And just kind of darkening in there where I put Atlanta United. Again, I'm going to pop this up using some foam adhesive. I think what, is, what I'm showing you here is that you can take these images and do whatever you want with it, make it into whatever you want. Again, looking at him, I, I immediately thought of, of, you know, a bear holding a heart. Uh, would indicate my love for United. I'm going to uh, cover in that heart with some Nouveau uh, crystal accents or it's like glossy accents. So now here I cut this one down with a girl, um, cut it down and I adhered it to a piece of navy cardstock from my stash. I'm going to go over the word thank you with my uh, Kaiser Craft uh, blue glitter markers or pens. Just going to kind of color all of that in. There we go. Going to darken the eyes, lips, nose, put a little white on the cheeks. Do a little accent marks with my white gel marker. I'm going to go ahead and adhere that to the white card base. And I'm going to bring in some more of those diamond stickles. I'm going to put it on the pom pom of her hat, put it on um, some of the stripes of her scarf, and then I'll also add it along the card just to add a, a little bit more dimension throughout, kind of make it look like snow. 
just random knots here and there. And then this last one, which was the first one that I did, I went ahead and adhered that using some double-sided tape, put that, matted that onto some chocolate cardstock, gonna get that put onto the card base. And as you can see here, I outlined it all with my black graphite marker, or pen, I should say, just to help make it pop out a little bit more. And actually, I thought that turned out pretty well. I, I like the way that turned out when I went around it with the black. It, it definitely made it stand out more. Here I'm going over the thank you so much with my Nuvo shimmer pen, but because it does reactivate that paint, um, I, you can see me just marking it off on the side, just getting it off my marker. And here I'm going to take some red stickles, and I'm going to add it to the berries. Give a little bit of added shimmer here. I'm going to add a little bit of additional embellishments with just my uh, white gel pen. I say embellishments, but it's a little bit of additional uh, highlight marks. And that's it. So here are my three cards. Here's my Atlanta United Bear. And my little girl in the snow. Same thank you. Really liked how that turned out. And then my card that says thank you with the pine cones. I really liked how those turned out. So you get 12 of those cards. So you can make quite a few cards with those. All right, so moving on to using this deer dye. Um, yeah, this card turned out okay, wasn't my favorite. Here you can see I'm going to cut it out, cut out the deer dye um, from this pattern paper. I really like this pattern paper with the mistletoe. I am uh, coloring the deer, I'm going to color him brown, and just using my Copic markers to do this. And initially, my thought um, is that I'm going to make this a shaker card. First of all, I, I cut out a a circle that'll go around it just to frame that up. I'm going to adhere a piece of acetate on the back. I'm going to line up my circle for behind there so I can get that adhered. Make a little tick mark so I know where to put it. I'm going to add some foam adhesive onto here and for whatever reason I chose to put a bunch of little ones. Yeah, I don't know why I, I kind of tortured myself with that, but I did. And I, and I put it all the way around. I won't torture you with watching me do it, but uh, yeah, I did do that. Um, so I, I'll get it all around the circle there so I have a tight little circle for my gems so they won't go outside of it. And once I do that, I'll take off all the back adhesive, I'll put it on, and here you can see it shakes. Now once I get all of that together, I decided I would put a little bit of this gold stickles onto the antlers here. You can't really see it in the video real well. You'll be able to see it better with the clear uh, or the close-up photo. Um, but I'm putting the sticker, stickles onto the antlers, and then so when you cut this die out, it cuts out the eyes and the nose, and I decided, well, let me try to put some of this dark walnut uh, Nouveau drops in there. Well, I think it wound up making it look very creepy, but I had already done that, so I didn't have an option, so I left it. Um, here I'm just stamping, um, I'm going to do the sentiment, I'm stamping the banner, and I'm going to put this sentiment in here that says love you I think it says love you what does that say no sending you love I, oh, I, can't, I, I can't see real well sorry um I'm pretty sure it says sending you love I'm going to go ahead and heat emboss that I stamped it with the verse of uh, fine onyx black ink so it stays um wet a little bit uh embossed heat embossed it with clear embossing powder just to make it stand up a little bit I'm going to add some glue onto the back of that 
pattern paper shaker piece. I'm going to cut out the banner here and I'm going to glue it down below the deer. I'm going to bring in some uh, rhinestones, some brown rhinestones, just to fill in some areas around the card. And as you, see, you can see the eyes a little creepy there. But that's okay. All right, so card number 10. This is my last one. I just got these um, masking stencils from Taylor Expression, and I wanted to use it. So I'm using the circle one. I uh, am stamping this critter uh, in the middle of where the circle will be on this piece of white paper. This is just some white Nina uh, paper, and I'm coloring this critter. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but coloring the critter with some brown markers. And I'll have all those listed here. I'm not even sure if this critter should be brown or not, but in my mind it looked fine. And um, here it looks like a blob. I will kind of bring his features more prominent here. Just a minute. Put in some eyes with my black pen. Now here you can see I want to um, I want to mask because I want to do some inkling around it. So in these masking stencils you get not only the positive but the negative. So I took the round the circle mask part and I just put some removable adhesive on it and I tacked that down to the image. And then I'm ink blending around here using coarse moss and bundled sage. Just trying to give it a dark, uh, uh, woodsy feeling here. I'm using my ink uh, blending brushes. Oh, I bring in a little bit of gathered twigs here just to go around the edges. Pop that off. Oh, before I do that, I'm going to use a little bit of my shimmer, shimmer spritz here. Just gives it a little bit of shine. Pop that up. Remove the the mask. So the nice thing is that it masked real well, but it did leave me with that big round circle around. So I was like, what am I going to do to kind of cover up that white space? Well, now these are stickers from the previous Sun and Says stamp kit. I'm sorry I'm using something from previous, but this is from the previous kit, and I had them left over, and it's got these gold leaves. And I was like, well, let me make a pattern around it to kind of um, encircle my little critter. And they there was enough on there that I could do that, so I made a little circle going all around around him. And then I was trying to decide what sentiment to use, uh, and I just was having a hard time figuring it out. So I went ahead in the meantime and matted that onto some of the craft cardstock and put it onto the card base. Doing my finishing touches on here. I'm adding some highlights and some stuff on his cheek. And then I decided, you know what, I still have some of these gold uh, stickers, gold foiled um, foam stickers. Now, this is from another, the previous Sun and Says stamp kit, also. And I had a ton of them left, and I really like them. So I decided I'd go ahead and use them. And I uh, put out the, or spelled out the word, hello. And initially I thought maybe I'd want to use an exclamation point. So you'll see that I put that on there and then I was like, why would I put hello exclamation point? So, so I didn't like the way that looked, so I took it off and just left the hello. bring in just some gold stickles, just kind of put a couple dots around 
along with the, some of the dark walnut stickle, uh, not stickles, but dark walnut nouveau drops. And that's it for that card. So I like the way that turned out. So here is a quick look at all 10 of the cards that I made. I appreciate you sticking with me. I know this video was a little bit long. Sticking with me and watching me make these 10 cards. I enjoy bringing them to you. Um, if you uh, get a chance, let me know which cards you like the most. I'd love to, to hear which one you really liked. Or if you didn't like any of them, that's fine too. Um, but I appreciate you watching my video and taking the time uh, to spend with me. If you haven't already, I would encourage you to hit the subscribe button as it does help to support my channel. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.